Hello, everyone, and welcome to Varsity Aces Live. I'm sports writer Greg Matora for NorthJersey.com and The Record. Tonight's topic, again, baseball. We have a couple of guests who won uh, or helped win their school's record 11th Bergen County baseball title, two players, and hopefully we'll also get a, uh, a bullpen visit from Coach Mark Sieslak. And then also we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming state baseball tournament, which opens up this week. Talk a little bit about who might have a chance to win a sectional title. So let's jump right to it. Let's bring my two starting guests in, two players from St. Joseph Regional High School. Uh, they won the Bergen County baseball title uh, on uh, Memorial Monday. First, let's say hello to Sean Hard. Sean, how are you? Doing well, Greg. How are you? All right. I'm feeling better because, again, last time you were a guest on the show, I uh, – I blew the opening, ground ball right back to me. I threw it in the inspection <laughs> stand. Uh, and then uh, our other Green Knight guest, also a senior, Jimmy Romano. Jimmy, how are you? Welcome to, to the show. I'm doing good, Greg. How are you? I'm not too bad. All right, let's, <laughs> let's get right down to it. Uh, the St. Joe's, you helped them win their school record 11th Bergen County baseball title in the uh, tournament's 62-year history, 6-5 win. Over Don Bosco, first you had a 3 nothing lead, then you were down 5-3. Relief pitching came in uh, and did a terrific job, in, including you, Jimmy. Uh, so let's start off with uh, with you, Jimmy. You know, what's going through your mind when you get the three runs early and then Don Bosco comes right back and scores a three in the bottom of the first? What's going through your head? You know, we get those three runs early. You know, we're sitting comfortable, we're confident, and then they come in and score those three runs, and now it's a ball game. You know, you got, you got yourself in the second inning, zero zero game. You know, get back on the field, score some more runs. Again, Sean, what's going through your mind when that happens? You're also batting in the top of the lineup. Uh, you guys put up the three in the top of the first uh, at Woodridge. Uh, what's going through your mind after the, your three, and then they come back and get a quick three on you? Yeah, I mean, when whenever we play a team like Bosco, you know. It's never going to be easy. So, I mean, from the beginning, we expected it to be a dogfight, and we weren't too surprised when it ended up being that. It's always going to come down to the last pitch against a team like that. Uh, they go up 5-3 after two innings. They put two more uh, up on the board in the bottom of the second. Now, Sean, what's going through your head uh, as you guys are down 5-3 and your starting pitcher's coming out of the game and you're already going to the bullpen? I mean, it was obviously a tough spot, but, you know, we, we trusted all of our guys coming out of the bullpen. You know, it happened sometimes, and we knew there was still plenty of game left to, play, uh, to be played, and we were still keeping our confidence up, and I feel like that, that helped us a lot, just staying in it. Now, we'll stick with you. What kind of a boost? I asked you to say something nice about Jimmy the other day after the game. What's going through your head when he uh, – I think it was a high-breaking ball, Jimmy, if I'm not mistaken, yes. but, Sean, what's yes. going through your head when he cranks out over the left-field fence to tie the score at five? Oh, man, I, I was so excited. You know, I was on first base at the time, and as soon as I see the pitch up there, I knew Jimmy was going to do something bad to that ball, and that's what happened, and I couldn't have been any more excited around those bases. And, Jimmy, what's going through your mind? Because, uh, you know, th their pitcher, uh, Caden uh, Dana, he was getting his breaking ball uh, down low in the strike zone in the middle innings, really doing a good job at that, and then one got up a little bit high. You took advantage of it. What were you seeing as it was coming in? Yeah, definitely. I mean, my first two at-bats, he just kept pounding that curveball, you know, so he kept getting me going. So um, I got in a two-strike count, and I was just thinking, you know, bat to ball, make hard contact, and see see anything down, hit it low, and he threw me hanging breaking ball. I just thought of, man, lift that, lifting it, lift, elevate and celebrate. That's it. So now we've got a 5-5 five, five score, okay? And, and what I found very interesting is, uh, Sean, you were named the uh, most valuable pitcher in the tournament. I saw you throw a shutout against Westwood, 3 nothing, And then you also threw a 6 nothing shutout against Bergen Catholic. And yet you had the game-winning hit. You had a solo home run uh, in the top of the sixth inning, leadoff hitter. Uh, what's going through your mind as you're, you're coming to bat in the top of the sixth with a 5-5 score? Yeah, I mean, especially that late in the game, you're just looking to get something started leading off the inning. And I knew I knew my guys behind me were going to get a job done if I was able to get on base. And I just happened to get a good pitch. Caden was dominating all game. He had some making some really good pitches and left one up for me. And I just jumped on it and just happened to go out. And again, Jimmy, I also find him uh, entertaining. Uh, you wind up coming on in relief. You pitched to the last five batters of the game, and yet you were voted the most valuable player. The uh, again the. Uh, the most valuable pitcher had the game-winning hit uh, 
uh, and the most valuable player picked up to save. What's going through your head as you're coming on in relief, uh, you know, in the uh, in the sixth inning, I think, uh, with one out? Yeah, so I came in with, I think, man on first, one out, like you said. And I first, I think it was your first or second pitch. I broke one away, got behind the our uh, catcher. So now it's a man on second. So I was thinking to myself, you know, pound the zone, dominate the corners, force them to hit the ball, be efficient, you know, and just so happened I got those first two strikeouts and then the last two guys, you know, roll over, roll over ground ball and then a comebacker to me. So I was just thinking the entire time, force them to hit the ball and good things will happen. Now, what's going through your head as you're getting to the uh, to the bottom of the seventh inning? You actually uh, got the last out. The ball came back to you. You know what's going through your head as the as the uh, the ball's in your hand, and and you gotta you gotta throw it over to first. So, I mean, I've been in those situations plenty of times before, like my sophomore year. But um, you know, I got the ball. I went to go run at him, tag him, but I was like, you know what? I don't want to drop the ball. So I turned to Sean, looked right, up, right in the eyes, and I threw it right to him, you know? And then after that, everybody started celebrating. We got we got a little video of that, uh, of the dog pile, the last play, uh, and then the dog pile after that. Here we go. Let's take a look at that. That was A-plus dog pile. <laughs> There we go. I got to say the Woodridge Athletic Com- uh, Complex is very impressive. Look at that scoreboard out there. Gorgeous. Once they improve the parking, it's going to be even better. Oh, yeah. Nice field. Yeah, very beautiful. nice field. All right. Excellent. Uh, so l- let's let's step away now for a second after me talking too quickly, talking about the game itself. Uh, well, let's talk about the season. St. Joe's, you were on the team two years ago. You reached the county final. Uh, what's going through your head after you lost in the county final to Ridgewood in 2019? You must be thinking how you want to get back in 2020. It's your junior year. And then out of nowhere, we have uh, the unexpected, a global pandemic. Jimmy, what's going through your head when the uh, when the 2020 season uh, never happens? The year so, after uh, yeah. the county final. So, I mean, after that loss in 2019 county final, I mean, I pitched, I think, most mostly every single game from that county from the quarter fi- quarterfinals leading up to the final. So, I mean, our big thing at St. Joe's in the baseball team is do it for the seniors, send them off the right way. So after that loss, you know, it hit me hard. I felt like I, I owed those guys next year a county championship. And, you know, this last year we couldn't get that because of COVID. But I feel like this year, you know, I feel like winning this county – championship really meant a lot to the guys last year and all the seniors. So I think they're very proud of us. Sean, same question to you. And that is you're losing the County final in 19. You're coming back from 2020, no season. What's going through your head? Yeah. I mean, 2019 was a heartbreaker. You know, we really, we really wanted to go out on a win that year, but like Jimmy said, we do for the seniors. So we had to make it up to some, some guys and losing last year was huge to COVID. And then this year, it just meant more. You know, we had a we had a bigger thing to accomplish, and we had to get done for the seniors this year, but not only this year, and seniors from last year as well. Okay. Again, uh, intermittently, I'm going to break in and talk a little bit about the state baseball tournament, not just you guys, but but other teams. In North 1, Group 1, we've got Waldwick as the number one seed. I've seen them play this year very solid. They, they won the uh, Patriot Division title, and uh, number two, Hasbro Kites. Those are two teams that I'm really uh, – you know, uh, looking to at least one of them to make a run uh, in their section. All right, back to you guys now. Uh, And that is, what kind of expectations do you have in North non-public A? You are the number one seed, but it is a very stacked uh, uh, section. Sean, let's start with you. North non-public A, St. Joe's number one seed. What do you envision? Yeah, I mean, in the state tournament, I mean, obviously our goal for the year is to win everything. We're trying to triple crown this year. We got the first two parts done, and we're looking for the third. But we know every single game we play in this tournament, it's going to be a fight, and every team we play is going to be top-tier teams. So we're just looking to take it one game, one inning, one pitch at a time, and try and help our team win. Jimmy, same question over you. Number one seed in North Mountain Public A, expectations. Yeah, to add on what Sean said, I mean, every game from now on is going to be a competitive dog fight. You know, it could be our last game of our senior year. So we got to make every single pitch, every single out, every single inning count. Okay. All right. Again, now we're going to talk uh, for a moment about North One Group Two. Several 
teams from our area in North Jersey who I think are quality teams. Mawa is a four seed. They're better than a four seed. Pascac Hill is a six seed defending champion, uh, and they played much better the second half of the season. Ramsey, number two seed. They were co-champions uh, with Mawa in their division, the, uh, the big North Patriot division. So we, we take a break away from there. Uh, so we'll step back again to North non-public A. How many times you, you play Pingree in the first round? Let's not take them for granted. Uh, you know, how do you transition away from winning uh, a, a county title and get refocused onto playing the state tournament? Jimmy, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, the county was great. I mean, everybody enjoyed it. You know, Monday it happened. Everybody had their day, like they're celebrating, partying afterwards and Tuesday too. But I feel like today, once we got to practice, it was we got more work to do. You know, we can't let up just because we won the league in the county doesn't mean we got to give up in states. You know, we want to go for it all. Sean, again, over to you. How do you transition from winning a county with a big dog pile celebration to now back to business into the state tournament? Yeah, I mean, now we're, we're at a fresh start right now. So we put the county tournament behind us. We can celebrate that after the season's over, but we have a new job at hand and we're, we're trying to focus up on that and we want to get that done as well. Okay, all right. Again, we'll move to North 1 Group 3. Also a very talented bracket as far as North Jersey teams, Pascac Valley. Uh, is, is, is a quality team, the number one seed. They were the only public school to make it to the uh, to the Bergen semifinals. They can hit. They have pitching depth. They didn't have a good game in the county semifinals against Bosco, but still a quality team. Ramapo, uh, number two seed, also a very, very good team. Wayne Hill's the five seed, and they won the uh, Passaic County tournament, so you can't underestimate them. Uh, so, uh, what were you? What are you doing this week to prepare? Do you know anything about Pingree, or uh, or do you just practice and 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 talk about getting better and not worry about who you're playing in the first round? Uh, Sean, we'll start with you. Yeah, I mean, we're just focused on ourselves at this point. I mean, we do, we haven't played Pingree yet, so we don't we uh, we don't know much about them. But we're just looking in, playing our playing our game every game, keep, uh, starting it from the beginning and doesn't really matter who we're playing. We're going to come out and play our game. Jimmy, same question. Yeah, I mean, today was like a let it out day, you know, get it out, you know, county champs. Like now it's like we're focused on state. So like today we like we had a little bit inner squatting, you know, we threw it to each other. We pl uh, we scrimmaging, stuff like that. So, I mean, I, I think more tomorrow is going to be of a scout day. Prepare for Friday. OK, all right. and now we'll take a look at the North One Group Four again, several good teams from our area. Number two seeded Ridgewood defending champion. And they also won a big North uh, uh, Division championship, the Freedom Division. Anthony, uh, was it pronounced Stefan or Stefan? Now I can't remember. There's a little flub there by me. He was the guest on the show last time. Man, I got some kind of a mental block there. Uh, <laughs> uh, also, uh, we have uh, two schools very good from Passaic County, Clifton, the number three seed. And uh, Passaic Tech, the number five seed, both quality teams. I believe they won their first round game, so uh, that they could make a good run. All right, back to you guys, and, and that is how many times can you keep playing teams like Bosco and Bergen <laughs> Catholic? They're not just uh, uh, teams that you might have to face in the sectional final. Uh, you might have to face them, uh, in, in, or you, if you beat Pingree, you're going to have to face either number four Bosco or number five Bergen Catholic. You know, how does that feel to have to keep playing the same, you know, quality programs that you also uh, face in the division and in the county again and again and again? Uh, Jimmy, let's start with you. I mean, to be honest, it's awesome. You know, both teams are rivals. Get to play them. I think Bosco, we played them both three times already, possibly four times, you know. I mean, those games are just awesome. They're always down to a dogfight, always down to the last pitch. So, I mean, I'm not complaining. I don't think anybody else is complaining about it. Sean? Yeah, I completely agree with Jimmy, what he said. You know, we're, we, we would play them every game if we could. You know, those games are the, those are the best games, and those are the games we're going to remember for a long time. Those are always a good fought game and always comes down to the last pitch, and we love those type of games. And how much does it help all of you? And that's going to lead into my next conversation here. Uh, how much does it help all of you to play that vicious big no uh, North United division schedule where it's two against Bosco, two against, oh, look, we have Markin from the bullpen here. Uh, <laughs> so that's a good thing. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> Hello. The fifth inning here, and we're bringing Morgan. I've been here. Uh, I've been in the bullpen throwing. <laughs> yeah. Are, are you loose? Are you loose? You need somebody, you need somebody to close it out. Uh, you know, how beneficial is it to play such a, a challenging regular season schedule? Is that Sean. for me? Oh. We're going to go with Sean. Good. All right. Yeah. I mean, that schedule is awesome. You know, we're, we prepare for those games every week. You know, those, those are what we look forward to all year, all winter, all fall. We're ready for those big weeks against Bosco and Bergen and just getting to play them every, all, uh, multiple times a year. Just something that we really enjoy and we look forward to every single year. Jimmy, same question over to you. The tough schedule. Yeah, I, I just think that prepares us, you know, for every game when you're playing 110 percent every game, you know, it gets the mindset going. It gets you thinking like every single game is going to be a dogfight, you know, so I think those games really help us. Mark, have you heard the question again? We'll, we'll bring it over to you. How beneficial is it to be in the big North United division where you're going to have to play Don Bosco twice, Bergen Catholic twice, even the poll twice and Paramus Catholic twice? Uh, how does that prepare you for moving forward into county and state tournaments? I think it's really awesome. I think, you know, on all these teams in the big North, they all have big, big time players and college level players, and they're all going to go play in college next year. And this really gets to prepare them. We had, you know, six different pitches in, in the last few games. We played Bergen three times and Bosco going to play three times. So everybody's getting a little chance and a little taste of, of what it's going to be like when they move on. And so nothing can prepare them any better than playing each other all the time. Which leads me into, because uh, I'm doing a little talking about each of the uh, brackets in, uh, in North Jersey, uh, North non-public B. Uh, we have St. Mary's as a number three seed. They got off to a late start. They didn't start the season until a week uh, later than everybody else that they picked it up. Dwight Englewood wins the division title. They're doing very well. And then uh, DePaul is a number five seed, but again, you know, they, 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 they've played a very tough schedule playing you twice, Bosco twice, Bergen Catholic twice, Primus Catholic twice. So you, you can't discount the Spartans. Uh, all right, Mark, we're going to start peppering you with several questions that we had asked Sean and, uh, <laughs> right, and Jimmy. We'll, we'll backtrack. And that is uh, what is going through your mind a couple of years ago when you lose to uh, Ridgewood in the county final. Uh, uh, Sean and Jimmy have talked about how they want they wanted to come back and really do some damage in 2020, and then the season gets wiped out by the pandemic. It, this was, I'm very happy that the kids were able to see this one through because it, it really was a tough road. We lost, we you know, um, Ridge was a tough team. These guys were sophomores. Um, we always like to pass the torch, so we're playing for our seniors, uh, and that was a tough game. We had the lead, and we ran out of a little pitching, and somebody got hurt before the game, and Ran out of pitch, and long story short, we come up short there. But we are totally prepared for the following year. They're all coming back, and they're ready to go, and we're ready to kind of, like, do what we got to do for the guys that left and didn't get the opportunity, and then we don't get to play. And that was a, that was a really good group of kids. Um, but, again, Jimmy and, and Sean and all the sophomores and Drew, they're still all there. And now we come back this year, and, um, you know, it really I, – I don't think anybody talked about – you know, anything until one part was done. We, we talked about the league. That's what we were trying to do. We talked about the county when the league was over. Um, and now that the county's over, we're talking about the states. And, you know, we'll, we'll celebrate all those things later on, but we're kind of focused on moving forward. But but the thing that I think the weight off our chest is now is that we were able to kind of let the seniors that left last year that didn't get a chance to go through it kind of live through the kids now that they, they, they wound up winning and, and being able to share that with them because that's really what was important to most of the kids. And again, I already interrogated Sean and Jimmy on the on the uh, the blow-by-blow blow of the game the other day against Bosco 6-5. What's going through your head when uh, when you have a 3 nothing lead right in the top of the first inning and then you give the three runs right back and then you even give up two more runs in the bottom of the second and now you're down 5-3? Well, let me tell you. I'm too old for this, first of all. I can tell you that because, I mean, we got three runs off of Dana, who I thought was exceptional. Um, he was throwing really hard and good breaking stuff. And and I was really proud of our kids that worked all week to prepare for him and to put three runs up in the beginning. I was just like, wow, really excited about it. And then we gave three up and I said, oh, boy, you know, now we're back to square one. And then they went up by two. And I, and I, said, I was saying to myself, geez, you know, we – it's going to be tough to get runs off of him, but we, we had a game plan and, 
And, um, you know, we, we wanted to get them out of there by the fifth inning to see if we can get a sh- chance at the game. And, uh, you know, I thought it was going to be a tough road, and we winded up doing that. We winded up, you know, um, you know, getting to the pen and, and, and but tying it up first, which was really good. And um, we were really planning on Jimmy coming in for the last two innings. So we used, you know, Brendan and Jude early, and then we got a chance to get it into Jimmy's hands. And I, I felt comfortable when we got into that fifth and Jimmy was going to the mound. Now, I, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, uh, credit Brendan. Again, he came in, he threw three and a third scoreless innings. I, I believe he didn't even give up a hit, mm-hmm. uh, which I didn't realize until he uh, he left the game. So props to him. He really did a terrific job. Can you talk about, you know, g- getting him to come in in the third inning and bring you into the sixth inning? Yeah, he's been a trooper all year because, you know, you know, some teams go down the line and they say, uh, you know, every four days they're pitching regardless and they get into a routine and rotation. And we kind of skip Brendan around a little bit. In the beginning of the year, we were playing Pope John and we knew Pope John was a really tough team. And, and Brendan was supposed to pitch the next game. And we passed that start up because we knew, you know, it's the first game of the year when Sean's not going to go deep with his pitch count. And we would need somebody to close that out. And Brendan volunteered to do that. So when we played Pope John and, you know, Sean went into the sixth inning and Brendan came in and closed the door. That was phenomenal. It was, it was a real team effort on his part. And, you know, he's that kind of kid. It's team first. And then we got into this game here and we said, you know, we're going to need you for a couple innings. We can't worry about the next day or the States or anything like that. We have to we have to take care of business now. And he said, no problem. You know, and, and you know, whatever you need, coach, I got it. So we went with Jude and then we, we were able to get a couple of real strong innings out of him to get us to the fifth inning, which we were planning on doing. Now, how much preparation when you have such a busy week, such a busy last, you know, 10 or 12 days, how much preparation can you do uh, pitching wise? How much looking ahead can you do? Or is it just, well, who whose arms feel good today and who who hasn't been used up and exceeded their pitch count? Yeah, you know, unfortunately, we you do have to really prepare that because in our last week we played – Bergen, Bosco, Bergen, Bosco, Bergen, Bosco, pretty much it on the last two weeks of our schedule. So, you know, you have to prepare and have the right guys ready, you know, to put into that situation. You know, um, you like to put the kids in a situation where they can succeed and, and um, you know, you don't want to put somebody in and it's not ready for that moment. So we, we were able to do that. You know, we were able to do that, to be honest with you. Again, a quick look at a bracket, North 2, Group 2. We have Rutherford as the top seed. I believe they won their opener, so I think um, among the teams in our area, uh, Rutherford uh, also a division champion from the NJIC. They won the Colonial Division. They have the best chance to advance uh, from uh, from our area. Okay, back to you guys, and that is uh, we, we had just started to take a look forward into the state tournament, which we have, we have begun right now. You play Pingree. Uh, in in your first round game, do you know anything about them, uh, or have you not thought about them, and you're just focused on yourselves, Mark? I, I went to see Penguin yesterday. They played uh, Union Catholic, I believe, and uh, Union Catholic was up four runs most of the game. Uh, the Penguin kids, they they battle. They didn't give up. They came back. Um, you know, so they were battling. They're a tough little team, and and no, we're not going to take them lightly. And uh, we. You know, play, we practiced a little bit today, uh, you know, just to get the kids back in, you know, shape a little bit. In other words, get their head moving forward. And tomorrow we will we'll prepare for Pingree for sure. Okay. And, again, forgive me if I'm uh, looking ahead a little bit, but the, the bracket is stacked. Uh, there, there are some terrific mm-hmm. teams in there. I mean, Pope John is number two. They're on the other side of the bracket. Again, you played them opening day. Uh, I believe uh, well, that seems a long, long time ago that you beat them two to one. Does that sound vaguely familiar? I think it was yesterday. <laughs> uh, for me, it seems like a long time ago, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, but first, you're going to have to get through. It's almost like the Bergen half of the bracket. Uh, you know, Don Bosco is the uh, four seed. Bergen Catholic is the five seed. Uh, you know, how, how, how do you get through that? We've alluded this, to this multiple times during the show here, but how, how do you keep playing the same terrific teams uh, over and over again? You know, well, well, at this stage, they're all good teams, you know, but you think they put us in another bracket so <laughs> we could see somebody else. But, yeah, that, they're all good teams right now, so we have to prepare. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, you know, it's it's quality baseball with the teams that you're talking about. So it, 
I don't. It's really not that relevant who you're playing at this point. You got to play good baseball, no matter who it is in those brackets. You have to play good baseball, and um, you know, limit your mistakes, and and you know, see if you can move on. It's a one game elimination, so yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point. They're all good teams. Uh, last question. Uh, we're gonna actually take a step back, uh, and that is, uh, you won your eleventh, or St. Joe's won its uh, a county title, raising eleventh championship bergen county uh what is the significance regardless of what happens moving forward here you have a division title you have a county title uh, how significant is that people ask me this all the time about uh you know what's more important the county the state you know you know of course you want to be of course you want to win the state you know it's not just north it's down south and and you know it's, it's everybody in the state and of course you want to win that, but, you know, up in Bergen County, you got Paramus Catholic, DePaul, you know, Don Bosco and, and St. Joe's. We're all in like a few miles away from each other. You know, it, so you want to be the best in that area. It means a lot to win the county. We take a lot of pride in our county and the baseball in our county. So to be the county champs, you know, says something to us. You know, we, we respect all these teams in this county. So, yes, state's important, but we do really appreciate our county, for sure. Okay. All right. Well, that, that about wraps it up. Uh, I'd like to thank our guests from St. Joseph. Uh, we have most valuable pitcher, Sean Hard, who had the game-winning home run again in the county final. Uh, we have Jimmy Romano, who picked up the save, and yet he was the most valuable player. In the county tournament, that's amazing. I took both of those uh, photos that we just popped up there, uh, and I'm not a photographer. And then coming in and picking up the save here, we have Coach Mark Sieslack. Mark, thank you so much for joining us uh, and picking up the save. You, you got the final out there to get us through this. Thank you. Uh, and, and that does it. I hope everyone goes out and plays well in the uh, – That's it. Can I close it?